Good morning. My name is Scott Cooper. I work for the Division of Extramural Inventions and Technology Resources in the Office of Extramural Research at NIH. The purpose of this iEdison webinar series is to educate the NIH extramural research community about the invention reporting requirements of the Bayh-Dole Act and using the iEdison system to comply with those requirements. This is one in a series of brief presentations about Bayh-Dole Act reporting. I'd like to start off with a brief analogy. This is rocket science. This is not rocket science. This is the government support clause we'll be discussing today. So kick back, take off your shoes, put your feet up on your desk, and enjoy the show. Our agenda and learning objectives today, uh, it's a basic introduction to the government support clause. We're going to start off with the definition of an invention, then by dole government support clause requirements, acceptable and unacceptable government support clause documents, acceptable and unacceptable government support clauses, and finally available resources for you in case you have any questions, issues, or concerns. So what is an, invent an invention under the Bayh-Dole Act? 37 CFR section 401 defines an invention as any invention or discovery which is or may be patentable or otherwise protectable under the US code. A subject invention means any invention of the contractor conceived or first actually reduced to practice in the performance of work under the grant or contract. Now the federal or government support clause. This is a statutory requirement. 37 CFR 401 provides that the contractor agrees to include within the specification of any U.S. patent application and any patent issuing thereon covering a subject invention the following statement. Now the terms contract and grant and cooperative agreement are interchangeable for the purposes of this presentation. Same goes for contractor, grantee, and awardee. Now note the quotation marks surrounding the government support statement. This invention was made with government support under, identify the grant number, awarded by, identify NIH, the government has certain rights in the invention. Okay, the initial patent application. For the GSC, it's really just a fill in the blank exercise. This is not a time for creative writing. Uh, it's very simple. We fill in the blanks. So if there are leading zeros in your grant number, include them. So when you see identify the contract in the government support clause, include those leading zeros. There's an example for you on the screen. Remember, zeros are numbers too. Identify the federal agency. This is the awarding federal agency, not the institute or division within that agency. For example, we wouldn't use the National Cancer Institute. We would use the National Institutes of Health. It may sound simple, but it can get confusing. So here's a tip if you're unsure which agency is your awarding agency. Just look at your notice of award. Now we're going to move on to acceptable documents that should contain the government support clause. Patent applications submitted to the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, provisional and non-provisional or utility applications, continuations. A continuation is a second application for the same invention claimed in a prior non-provisional application and filed before the first application becomes abandoned or patented. Continuations in part. A CIP is an application filed during the lifetime of an earlier non-provisional application. And divisional applications, which is a later application for an independent or distinct invention disclosing and claiming only a portion of and only subject matter 
disclosed in the earlier or parent application. All patent applications containing the GSC must be uploaded along with, and this is important, the US PTO filing receipt. The filing receipt is an official document from the PTO letting us know that they received the application from you. Why do we need that? We must be able to determine whether what you provided in iEdison is the same thing that you provided to the US Patent and Trademark Office. So what are some unacceptable government support clause documents? Single sheets of paper that contain only the government support clause. They don't look like they were submitted to the USPTO in connection with any invention whatsoever. And they look like they were simply typed on a computer, printed, and uploaded. Secondly, documents that contain no evidence of submission to the US Patent and Trademark Office. One example that I've seen recently is a 33-page document. It looks like a patent application, but there's no cover sheet, nothing to indicate submission to the USPTO, no date stamps, no filing receipt. So if the document looks like it was simply typed into a word processing application and printed and uploaded, and we don't have any evidence that it was submitted to the US Patent and Trademark Office, it will be rejected. Unacceptable government support clause documents um, inc also include documents which do not contain anything resembling a government support clause. And these are real examples. A published article or a manuscript with an acknowledgement of federal funding, but not a government support clause. An invention disclosure. A confirmatory license. A receipt from a retail warehouse store with a date. And a recipe for chicken paprikash. All right, maybe those two weren't real examples, but you get the idea. Acceptable government support clauses. An acceptable patent application that contains the following language with the appropriate and accurate information inserted where indicated in place of the parentheticals. And I'm going to read this to you because it's very important. Quote, this invention was made with government support under identify the grant of contract, awarded by, identify the federal agency, NIH in this case, the government has certain rights in the invention. Again, this is a fill-in-the-blank exercise. And remember the quotation marks surrounding the clause. There's no wiggle room. Adding conditional words such as may or might or could have or may have been, in part, a few, they're unacceptable. Don't be creative. This is the language that's required for the government support clause. Some unacceptable government support clauses. It must contain the grant numbers that match the grant numbers in IEDISON. If it doesn't match the grant numbers in IEDISON, we will reject the government support clause. For example, if Edison has four grant numbers and your government support clause that you uploaded only has two, then we will reject the government support clause. And uh, conversely, if the GSC has four grant numbers and iEdison only has two, we will reject your government support clause. And if the grant numbers in the government support clause do not match what we have in iEdison, we will reject your government support clause. Okay, now we're going to go into some examples of unacceptable government support clauses. Notice uh, what's highlighted in red and underlined. This invention was made, and here it is, in part, there's that conditional language, with government support under grant number HL002345, awarded by the National Institutes of Health. The government has certain rights in the invention. This is where some creative writing came in, and the fill-in-the-blank rule was not followed. Another example, this invention was made in whole or in part, conditional language, with government support under grant number HL012345, awarded by the National Institutes of Health and the Al Alphabet Soup Foundation. The Alphabet Soup Foundation, to my knowledge, is not a federal agency. 
so we would keep that out. The government has a few rights in the invention. Third, this invention may have been made with government support under grant number MH002345 awarded by the National Institute for Mental Health. Notice that the institute is inserted where the federal agency should be, so it should be the National Institutes of Health rather than the National Institute for Mental Health. A few more examples. This invention was made in part with government support under, and there's the grant number, awarded by the federal government as opposed to the National Institutes of Health, the government may have certain rights in the invention. Again, no conditional language. The government does have certain rights in the invention, not may have. The government has certain rights in the invention. Now we're getting really creative. This invention may or may not have been made in whole or in part with partial support under grant number MH2345, notice the missing leading zeros in the grant number, awarded by the National Institute for Mental Health. The government may have rights in the invention. And finally, this invention could have possibly been invented with or without full or partial support under a grant made by the Department of Transportation. The government may or may not have partial rights in the invention. Uh, now the, event, the example, the last example lists the Department of Transportation as the federal agency. That would be okay if it also listed the National Institutes of Health and the grant numbers. So you get the idea, no creative writing. Finally, this is your resource page. If you have any questions about government support clauses or any iEdison related issue, here's where you go. Thank you for taking the time to view this webinar and we hope it will be a valuable resource for you.